Kubo's masterpiece known as Bleach has been consistently slandered by the overall anime community for failing to do baseline foreshadowing. And I say slandered instead of criticized because after spending two seconds looking at Bleach, you will notice and see a lot of the foreshadowing Kubo presented. But before we start diving into that, we must sell out. Subscribe if you guys are new, we are currently grinding our way to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I'm uploading every day until the return of the Bleach anime. If this video hits 225 likes in the month of July, we will do a part 3 to this foreshadowing video. Because trust me, there's a lot more foreshadowing we can dive into. Comment your favorite piece of foreshadowing in Bleach, whether I mention it in this video or just a random piece of foreshadowing throughout the manga. I'd love to read it and perhaps if I haven't mentioned it yet, it might be used in my part 3. And without all further ado, let's begin this video. Let's begin with some more Kampachi and Yachiru foreshadowing. Last time we went fairly in depth with both of these, but there is even more shown on screen in chapter 113. In chapter 113, we see Yatru quote unquote use her Shikai prior to using her Shikai, as if it was more of an extension of herself. Later on, after finding out that Yatru is simply a Zanpak Toe Spirit, this scene starts to make far more sense as to why she never had to call upon it. Another piece of foreshadowing in the story is at one point we learn that Old Man Zangetsu, or Yuabak from a thousand years ago, switched sides and started helping Ichigo. Inside the story, at one point he says that only this blade can kill him. And as seen in the future, Ichigo's blade is the one that kills Yuabak. It's almost as if Old Man Zangetsu, or the uh, thousand year old Yuabak, was trying to help Ichigo in his battle against the Quincy's. Did you know that the worst reveal in Bleach was foreshadowed? Yami being the zero Espada was foreshadowed. Why was Yami considered an Espada? Not only was his official title a wrong card is, but he compared his number to Toshiro and was strong enough to not be Aizen's first creator Ronkar. Meaning that there had to be more to his number than meets the eye. This story puts an emphasis on Yami not using all of his strength. Consistently, Ukiwara recognizes that Yami has more strength to use. Ukiwara even went out of his way to be around Yami as a whole, as if Aizen needed Yami to be supervised at all times. While this last part is definitely a fan theory, Ukiwara never desired to really be near anyone. He never desired anything. He's supposed to be the incarnation of nothingness or nihilism, meaning him being by Yami had to have probably been an order from Aizen or something of the sort. These four statements, plus my little mini fan theory, all point to something Yami is hiding. Espada's rank never used the title of a Ronkar, therefore there had to be something in the mist hiding from the viewer's sight. Yami had a hidden power. That is not to say this foreshadowing was executed well. I hate the Zero Espada plot twist and find it to be super disappointing. Perhaps it's just the fact that we never got the chance to see Yami fight Byakuya and Kenpachi, or maybe it was because throughout the entire series at this point, Yami was presented as kind of a joke. But at least it was not, and excuse my language, an asshole. The next piece of foreshadowing is an interesting one, as it's not really foreshadowing, but I wanted to mention it for fun. Kubo confirms a West Branch of the Soul Society in Bleach Jet prior to Burn the Witch. Now the next part is the quote unquote foreshadowing for the anime, accidentally. I don't believe it's canon, but please just watch this clip. Making that kind of entrance? I'm gonna guess he flew. Oh wait, I've heard there's a tribe in the world of the living that gets around by riding on broomsticks. Bingo! Uh, yeah, I'm a Quincy, not a witch, okay? Burn the Witch has totally been masterfully foreshadowed this whole time. This is an absolute W. Thank you, Taite Kubo. Something I don't recall mentioning, or at least going too much in depth with last time, has to be the Ichibei foreshadowing. And there is a particular scene in the manga where we have ink covering the name of Old Man Zangetsu, or Thousand Year You Watch. Now I haven't done the calculations, but if we use the font that they were using, according to the fandom at least, Zangetsu cannot fit in the space, but Yuabak fits far better. Another big piece of foreshadowing throughout the story of Bleach is the Bankais of Shunsui and Kisuke. Earlier in the Arankar arc, Kisuke told Renji that his Bankai is not suited to train Chad. And while many might disagree, I actually agree with this statement. A Bankai like Renji's is far more suited to train another. With Kisuke's, he would just be dismantling Chad like crazy or upping his own strength to punch Chad back. Now, while it could be used to train for sure, Renji's is just suited far better and would work way easier with Chad. On top of that, just the mention of it proves that it's almost like a mystery. 
Not even Renji Ibarai has any clue of what Kisuke's Bankai is, as he assumes it would have been suited until Kisuke tells him otherwise. As we know in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, these stern writers had no idea what Kisuke's Bankai was, and definitely did not account for it. The Bankai was not only not suited for training, but also was being kept a secret. The second Bankai that got majorly foreshadowed is easily Shunsui's, as we learned from Ukitake that he can't use it around allies during the battle against Stark in the fake Kakura Town section of the Aronkar. Guess what we end up finding out? That he's not supposed to use it around allies. One piece of foreshadowing I originally mentioned goes far deeper than I originally thought. Upon rereading the Bleach manga for a certain video I was making, I found out that the substitution of Gummy Badge was far more than just weird, strange, and sus for the viewers. It was not even a calculation the viewers needed to make, as it was literally told to our face that it might be the imposter in Among Us. Originally, we saw how the badge simply did not work for its function of identification, and since that was its purpose, it was genuinely confusing from a viewer standpoint. Why was it present in the story? Some might have thought it was a comedy gag, but most of them realized that there was more going on behind the scenes. And as we learned in the Fulbring arc, or the Lost Agent arc, we were mostly correct. It was corruption. Now, it is foreshadowing how it doesn't work for its intended purpose, but did you know even Uryu, a character inside the manga, found the badge strange? Uryu thinks it's weird and assumes he was simply overthinking the situation while they were on their way back from Soul Society. This shows even more foreshadowing towards the Lost Agent arc as a whole, as even in-universe the characters found it weird that he was just given this badge. One thing I hadn't had the chance to speak about last time was Ginichimaru. Probably one of the strongest foreshadowed things in the Bleach franchise is Gin's betrayal of Lord Aizen. Firstly, Gin is considered to be quite a powerful captain someone who could easily take on Toshiro and Rangiku from the Soul Society arc. I mean, this man literally assassinated, in quotations, Lord Aizen, and was able to easily overpower an Ichigo that Unahana stayed to be even stronger than twice the strength of a captain. It just so happens that while Gin was playing with Toshiro, he stopped and left immediately when Rangiku showed up. But as we take a look at the scene for a split second, you can see him facing this emotional conflict when he sees Rangiku. We also see the dream Rangiku is having about her past with Gin Ichimaru, and when Gin finally reveals he is with Aizen, he apologizes to Rangiku. Move a little bit in the future, about 30 or so chapters before Gin's reveal, his battle with Ichigo begins, and we start to see even more signs, especially as the chapters grow closer to his betrayal. For example, Ichigo is unable to feel Gin's reason for fighting him, as if he was putting a facade on the whole time. Gin chooses to spare Ichigo and the whole time is testing his strength and explaining why he would fail against Lord Aizen. As if he himself has been planning this whole time to take on Lord Aizen because he knows exactly what is needed to fight Lord Aizen. Another panel that I had my friend send me when I asked for an example of foreshadowing because I was looking for a few more was really awesome. It's actually a conversation of Ishin telling a hospital to tell their boss that it's a request from Kurosaki. Meanwhile, Ishin has to have a relationship with their boss. As we continue reading Bleach, we learn that the boss that it is in reference to has to be Ryuken, Ryu's father. Meaning that all the way in the early 20s, Kubo had already connected the origin story of Ichigo Kurosaki. I personally found this piece of foreshadowing to be very shocking. And overall, if you want to see even more foreshadows in the Bleach franchise and you are new to this channel, this is actually a part 2 to a part 1. I include most of my favorite foreshadows in the Bleach franchise in that first part, and I think it's actually s better than the second part. This one had some good ones, but that one definitely has the best of the best in it, so I definitely recommend checking that out. It will be the first link in the description. Once again, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, drop a like, because I'm definitely open to doing a part 3. There's definitely more foreshadowing, I'll just have to reread some sections and learn a few, use the ones that I saved for next time just in case. But yeah, 225 likes. Also, drop a comment on your favorite piece of foreshadowing, and maybe a foreshadowing I haven't mentioned in either of these videos yet. And in the words of Gini Chimaru, bye bye!